All right, Refilters is here, Mac of San Diego. I'm with my good friend Kevin Cohen. I see you, Jake. It's good catching up with you. You you're, as well. You're a busy guy. We're, we're, we're both pretty, pretty busy. That's right. Um, man, for a while there, Live Aquaria was uh, dominating the pages of Refilters with all kinds of crazy rare fish and corals and uh, haven't been in touch with you nearly enough over the last year and I uh, want to find out what you've been up to. I hear there's been a lot of upgrades at the facility, which is really cool and encouraging. So tell, tell, us, tell us about that. Well, over the last year, we you know we've really had a lot of, of great upgrades and investments into our facility in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Um, some of the some of the most uh, coolest things for me is is another fish system. So we set up a four thousand gallon uh, fish marine fish quarantine system. How, um, how much uh, how much square footage is that? Well, it's taken up about maybe four or five hundred square feet. Oh, so wow. it, it's a really good. Um, Similar systems you've been to our place before. Um, really have some some high tech equipment, fluidized sand beds, ozone, big skimmers, commercial ultraviolet sterilization from Member Aquatics. Um, really nice um, commercial chiller barrels. Really maintain you know really stable water chemistry. You know, stable what, what, temperature. What's crazy is that uh, you know when it comes to high quality quarantine fish, especially exotics and challenging species, you know Live Aquaria is like the first, second, and third place to check out online for those kind of species. Species. And so it's really cool to hear that you're doubling down on, you know, making sure your fish are quarantined and conditioned because you already had a pretty sophisticated system. Definitely. What are some of the, the, the new things that you're implementing with this new system? So providing more space is critical for all the animals. So, you know, obviously when you get to a certain size and we're starting to, to condense fish more and pack fish together more, we, we obviously realize we need that space. And, and that's critical to properly conditioning any animal. You know, you really don't want to stress, stress the animals too terribly much. So, you know, it's important to spread them out and that's giving us this ability to do. You know, along with the, our, our fish systems that we've upgraded, um, we're really upgrading a lot of the lighting systems as well. And I'm happy to, to, to partner with Ecotech Marine. Um, we're really switching on a lot of the halide lamps that we have in our building and really, you know, implementing radions. I, I feel Ecotech Marine radion lights are, are great lights for, for commercial applications yeah, and for in, home aquariums. In many respects, you know, as far as a high performance reef aquarium light, the radion is uh, quickly becoming, you know, kind of uh, the golden rule, you know, the gold standard for, you know, coral growth and coloration and controllability, so. Yeah, a lot of people ask, why, why, why do you like this light? And I, I love radions because, you know, we can really fine tune each each of our raceways, depending on the animals that we're keeping in that raceway. Very you cool. know, whether so, it's intensity or color spectrum or whatever. It's the same thing be. as fish, you know, they have very specific care requirements. Uh, we were talking about earlier about having a community reef tank and how hard that is versus, you know, segregating them and giving each group of animals, whether they're fish or corals, exactly what they need to thrive and survive. So, um, some, some cool fish that we're, we're really proud to come to market with. Um, we've got Royal Grama. Um, they're captive bred in Australia, so Very cool. we're the, should be the first retailers um, to offer captive bred Royal Grama into the marketplace. These, these are actually bred in Australia? They are. <laughs> um, I love the irony that this, this common fish from Florida, which I love, it's one of, yeah. if I had to only keep a Royal Grama for the rest of my life, I think I would be pretty happy. But it's ironic that this fish from Florida is actually being bred in Australia and Definitely. shipped back to us because in Australia, it's challenging for them to get those fish. Definitely. How do yeah, they look? The price point's really high. Um, their colors are great. Um, and the size is really nice too. So I think very compatible with our, our you know, complementary to a wild harvested rural grama, which is awesome. Another great species is Stonogobiops yasha from yeah, Roger Williams yeah. University. You know, we, we've really helped to provide some brood stock to Roger Williams University, which is awesome. And we've always, you know, supported them in, in selling their Lysomata, their blood red shrimp, um, now the Yasha Gobi. So, you know, little, little commensal gobies are awesome. I mean, they're great for smaller let me, tanks. And, let me ask you, you know, like leading up to Magna, Rising Tide was like announcing a new species every couple yeah. of days. Do you feel like this could be a, a banner year for new captive bred species in the trade? I, I do, and it's great to see um, more captive bred species coming into the trade. And, and you know, I think all of us that are hardcore fish geeks, you know, we're really embracing this and welcoming it with open arms. You know, we really need to continue to break new ground and move forward um, and, and invest in aquaculture. And, 
you know, where there's a viable alternative to wild harvested species, you know, we want to support that. Regardless, obviously, the margins aren't there on some of these fish, you know, to get them into the marketplace. They're much more expensive with, with what goes into producing them. But regardless, we want to be on the forefront of that and to, cool. to provide these fish into the marketplace. I did my part this year. I got uh, a pair of captive bred uh, mandarin gobies, you know, oh, yeah. really challenging species. But these guys, you know, they don't really come up to the front. They're still a bit shy, but they're not shy about eating. Huh. Almost every single night, I'm looking at my female uh, dragonette. She's only, you know, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. They've grown a lot since the beginning of the summer, but she is bloated and, you know, just eats eats with gusto. There's just no problem feeding this fish. And so that's one of the great benefits of, uh, you know, dealing and working with uh, captive bred fish. Yeah. Oh, what are some other things we can look forward to uh, from Live Aquaria in the near future? We're really going back to um, releasing a Friday of the month every month. So oh, really yeah, yeah. going back to hardcore our roots you know we, we started our facility as an aquaculture facility and we really are, are, are doubling down on that stuff as well so we've really been growing a lot of really nice conditioning up and growing up some really nice coral strains you know, that, one thing that's really that interesting is um, since the beginning live aquaria has had a certified captive grown coral is correct. that the right program yeah and you've been doing it so long now that it's like it's not necessarily news or, or, or you know, breaking news, but you guys are just churning away. You've got like this expansive coral farm. You grow a lot of frags. We you do. Grow a ton we of do. frags. Um, I, I'm most proud of our, our show tank. We actually set up a, a deep dimension uh, marine land tank. It's Is a this 300 the one that gallon. I saw when it was dry? You we, did. We recently uh, scaped it, but you scaped it dry. Yeah. So I haven't seen it with water, and you got a bunch of corals in there. We, we do, and we've actually taken photographs of the tank every, every week. Um, oh, wow. So we're really going to come out and do this really cool progressional growth series. Um, you know, really highlight and spotlight some of the corals in that tank. And most of them started as just little one inch coral frags. And it's impressive to see a very basic system. Um, big sump, filter socks, big calcium reactor, some old school metal highlights. I remember seeing some, it and it uh, was just, it was, it was classic. It was no frills, but everything yeah. you needed. And you could focus on the tank and what's Definitely. inside. So that's really, really cool. The corals have exploded in there. I and mean, we've got some acros that have grown, you know, eight, 12 inches in a year, which is very incredible, cool. so. Um, yeah, man, definitely uh, catch up with us. Let us help uh, share the news of, on, on this progression. You know, it's easy to think of Live Aquaria as a, you know, a behemoth in the marine aquarium industry, but you guys are real hobbyists. You keep your hands wet every day. And, uh, you know, having a show tank in your facility really uh, drives home the point that you guys are practicing reefers. You're keeping your hands wet, you're growing corals, you're using equipment, and that reflects in the quality of the livestock that you bring to market, so. And you know me, I'm the, I'm the hardcore fish guy, so I'm proud to say in my office I've got a, a pair of colony now, a couple pairs of Vanusta, and I really want to keep conditioning those up and get them to somebody um, that would appreciate it, hopefully could culture those fish as well in the future. So. Very cool. Well, I think I'm way overdue for a visit to uh, Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, you know, next time I see you after the show, it'll be on your home turf. Sounds great. Right. Thank you. Later.